In this video, I'll be talking about how to create a website. This is going to be an intro about the creation of a website. This is not going to be an in-depth video as you can make out by the time of this video. So in this video, I'll talk about what are the key requirements of making a website. Now, if you have seen my previous video of this series, you would perhaps know where you fall in the category. So in my previous video, I talked about who needs a website. So if you are one of those people who needs a website and want to learn the process of creation, this is going to be the starting point for you. So get your basics right with this one. So if that sounds good, let's start with the video. Welcome to the Bindery IQ. If you're visiting this channel for the first time, do consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Now this video is going to be a four step process or, or the entire creation of the website is a four step process rather. Now oh, this is an oversimplified way of treating the creation of a website, but I think it serves the purpose well. These are the four steps. The first is creation or getting your own domain name. The second is getting hosting. Now don't worry about any of the terms which I'm talking about. I'll talk about most of these terms in this video itself and in the coming videos. I'll talk about everything which you need to know about creating a website. The third thing you need is a WordPress. Now WordPress is going to be a website builder software which we'll, we'll be using. And finally, it will be all about editing that website, editing the website to your liking. Let's start off with the first thing, which is going to be the domain. Now domain is nothing but the web address of your website. So this is the URL that people will search on the internet to get to your website. So for example, if you have to reach Google, you, what you do is type www.google.com. If you have to reach Facebook, you type in www.facebook.com. Similarly, if you need to get your own domain name, you'll be typing in www.yourdomain.com and whatever your domain name is. Now, of course, this is not going to be free because ultimately you are renting out a name on the internet. You are renting out some address on the internet and for that it will cost you. And usually it's very cheap. It costs you about eight to 15 bucks an year. Yes, that is per year. And if you want to compare these costs with the real life cost, this will cost you about two to four coffees per year. So it's not that big a deal. In order to purchase the domain name, we'll be using a service called Namecheap, which is www.namecheap.com. So this is their domain from which you'll purchase your domain. Uh, it's a kind of a meta concept, but it works well. Now, don't worry about any of the links. I'll have all the links in the description below. Let's move on. So this was the first thing which you'll need, a domain name, an address which people can use to reach your website. Moving on to the second key requirement, which is the hosting. Now hosting is nothing but a space on the internet where your files are stored. Now these files could be images, text and so on. It works something like this. So for example, say you have a page, uh, you have some text, you have some images, you have some titles and text and some databases and everything. And you want to store it somewhere because ultimately people will be coming to your website to see something. And these are the things they might see. They might see some pages. They want to see some images. They want to see some text you have written, some data. So you have to give them a storage space for this. Now, ideally in an ideal world, all this hosting or the space where your file resides can actually be your own laptop or your own computer. However, that doesn't work well, primarily because of two reasons. First is that you have to keep your computer on all the time. So there should be no power outages. Otherwise, the links will be broken. And once you start getting a lot of traffic, you have to keep your website up continuously. Second thing, people will not come alone to your website. So there may be times when a thousand people are trying to visit your website at the same time. In that case, if you have your files stored on one laptop, say, you need to have a lot of bandwidth so that people can extract or actually view those files on your website which are stored on your computer at the same time. In that case, you need a lot of bandwidth. And also, again, the bandwidth should not be broken at any time during the day. It's not realistic to have it on your computer. Hence, there are providers who give you some space on the internet that they rent out to you. It works something like this. People have created a lot of CPUs inside bunkers which have continuous backups, which have continuous power backups as well, so that the space which they provide, the CPU power they provide is kept on all the time. So you don't have to worry about any lacks in communications. Whatever visitors come, every time your website will be on and that website could be seen by your visitors, even if they come in a bundle. So imagine a scenario 
which is people are trying to come to your website from a desktop or CPU or a mobile. So they are trying to visit your website, which is www.domain.com say. Now in order to give them access to this website, there should be a central space where all your files are stored. As we talked about, this data service provider or the hosting service providers gives you that space so that even if all these people want to view that website simultaneously, they can do so. And this is all what hosting is, a space on the internet, which is on all the time. Yet again, it must cost something because nothing good comes free. So the hosting service will typically cost you around three to 10 bucks per month. So you have to pay around three to 10 bucks per month, depending upon the usage. So if you have just one site to run, uh, that will probably cost you around two to three bucks a month. And if you start making more websites, it costs you more than that. It depends upon the bandwidth you want and various other factors. But for an, a starting user, it will be typically around three to 10 bucks a month. Again, comparing it to the real life, that's around one dinner per month. And I don't think that's such big a deal if you fall into one of those categories, which I talked about in my previous video. So if you have something to sell uh, and if you are ultimately going to make some money out of it, I don't think three to 10 bucks is that big a deal. In order to purchase domain, we'll be using this service provider, which is called Bluehost. Now we are using this because this is recommended by one of the website builder software which we'll be going to use, which is wordpress.org. Now this on its website recommends the use of Bluehost. And I personally use Bluehost and I have used it for a long time. And I feel that Bluehost is a great tool to have your files hosted on. And we'll be using that. You can, of course, do your own research and your, do your own digging around and go ahead with whatever hosting you want. Again, don't worry about any of the links. I have all the links in the description. So we are done with the second part of the equation. Now let's move on to the third, which is the WordPress. Now WordPress is our website builder software. Now we use any software because we do not want to reinvent the wheel. And it is the same when it comes to websites. So we do not want to do all the styling ourselves. We do not want to do code coding ourselves, at least for people like us who are too lazy to code. All we want is to get our website out in the world. And that is where a website builder software comes into picture. So what we'll be using is called WordPress. WordPress is a great software and you can assess that by the fact that 35% of the websites in the entire world use WordPress. It is of course open source, which means it's free. It's simple and easy to use. First of all, we'll not be using any code when we, we are going to create using this website builder software. So don't worry about anything about codes, about HTML files, about PHP files, about CSS, styling, JavaScript, and so on. You, you do not need to worry about any of that. All you need to worry about is what you want to tell the world about yourself, about your business, what you want to sell, how you want to sell it, images, and so on. So all layman stuff. So it is very simple and easy to use even for a beginner. Most importantly, you own the data. So you must have heard rumors on the internet that uh, websites are becoming free so you can host a free website. And all that comes with, of course, a lot of misrepresentation. So you do not own the data on most of those sites. So for example, on sites like wix.com and squarespace.com and so on, there are many aspects which are not free. So in order to get your own domain name, of course, you have to pay. In order to get speed, you have to pay. Ultimately, you don't, don't own that data. Everything on of your website is stored somewhere which is not in your control. So Wix is controlling all your data. Once they decide to shut down their company, your data is gone. But in case of hosting, nothing like that happens. You can have the backup of your data. And if you want to place it on some other hosting service provider, you're good to go. Most importantly, WordPress. On WordPress, you are never alone. So it's a huge community. Imagine 35% of the websites in the entire world using WordPress. So everything which you can think of, or rather every problem which you can think of has already been addressed. Last but not least, it is scalable. And that is one feature which I love about WordPress. So you can cater a single visitor a day as well as a million visitors a day using the same WordPress software. It is as scalable as that. All you need to do, of course, in, is increase the bandwidth and the space and so on. But in terms of the software's ability, this is extremely powerful. So you can start scaling your websites. You can start creating e-commerce websites. You can start creating learning management systems and powerful websites. And in fact, in my upcoming video, I'll show you about the power of WordPress as to how many websites use it. So that is all about WordPress. Of course, WordPress is open source. Open source. That is, it is free and it is free forever. So you do not have to pay anything for using WordPress. 
This is the third part of the equation. And finally, we have the editing of the website itself. And editing is where you'll probably spend 99% of your entire time. This is where you'll add or edit content like pages, posts, images, videos, data, products, and whatever you try to put on your website. So you'll be editing that, adding that, deleting that, and so on and so forth. You'll want to change the look and feel of your website. You'll be adding some features which look good, adding some colors, adding some gradients, adding some lines, and try to change the look and feel of the website. So you can do that with editing a website. Again, you'll want to change the navigation settings. You'll want ways for people to navigate your website. You can change or rather add functionality like e-commerce functionality to your site. You can add forms on your website. You can add features of online payments on your website. And there are numerous functionalities which you can use. And for that, we'll be using something which is called plugin in terms of WordPress. Don't worry. Again, I'll talk about everything in a lot of detail, rather excruciating detail if you must. You can add SEO, which is search engine optimization. Again, I'll talk about all these topics. You can connect your website with Google and Facebook for analytics and creating ads, displaying ads to whatever visitors have visited your website. So you can track them using pixels and other things. You can add security measures to prevent spams and people to hack your website. Although WordPress by default is highly secured, but you can add additional layers of security. Again, you can increase the speed as, as you start growing your website, there will be places where you can optimize the content of your website and thereby increasing the speed and so on. So all these things you can do. And these are basically the four things which you look for or rather which form the existence of a website. So you need to have a domain, which is very important. You need to have a hosting where your files will be stored. You need to have a website builder software so that you don't have to code. And finally, using all these three or the website software in particular, you edit your website to look and feel and display the way you want it to. And in the next video, we'll be taking you through the first step, which is the domain. So we'll be telling you how to get a domain, what to look for in a domain, all the tools and tips and tricks. So watch out for that video. And this is all for this video. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, do hit that thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel. And let's see you on the next video on domains.